All right, so now this is the last image that I want to work on when discussing uh, uh, color adjustments, color balance, dynamic range, and all of that kind of stuff. This is a panorama, all right, and I shot it um, up in Tobamori. That's in Ontario somewhere, if you guys don't know about it. And what I did was I went into Bridge, I selected one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five individual images. And in Bridge, through Photoshop, I got the panorama to be created, all right? Now, I did not have the auto blending turned on or anything else like that. I just said, you know, do your stuff, give it to me, let's see what you can do with this. Now, I shot this handheld, all right? And Photoshop does a pretty good job of lining up and marrying up different areas of your image and all that kind of stuff. If I was on a tripod, bang on, everything would be perfect, everything would line up properly. Doing handheld, eh, sometimes it's a hit or miss, all right? But what the heck, and I was on you know, a little bit of a vacation up here and I saw this you know, scene, so I said, okay, I'm gonna shoot this for a class project, all right? So now, normally, what you might want to do is find an exposure and stick with that so that your sky uh, is the same in each one and your concrete's the same in each one, but I left it on auto and I wanted to see what auto would produce for me. And we can see right here that this image is darker than this image and this one's almost the same. These guys are almost the same. This one's definitely di and definitely different. So this is the whole reason why I did this is so I'd end up with this. So this is a beautiful thing. I'm really happy I got it this way. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the levels dialog box. All right, and I want to keep an eye on my histogram over here. I just wanted to bring up the levels. So uh, I, this is where I'm going to make my adjustments, but I just wanted to get an idea of what my histograms look like. All right, so for the most part, all of these images here will look like this histogram here. As I'm getting closer to this image over here with that old style second floor building restaurant kind of thing, whatever it is, um, we're going to get more uh, highlight information because of the content of the image and all that kind of stuff. But uh, for the most part, we're lacking that stuff. Anyways, I just wanted to show you where it is. The idea here is not at this point to set the dynamic range of the image. The idea here is to get these guys to blend as best as possible. And what I can't achieve here, then there'll be other things that we can do in the next lesson, which is, or the next module, the next series of things, which is retouching and repairing your images. So let's get to it. All right. So I'm just going to exit out of here because I don't want to make an adjustment to the image on the far left where I want to start making my adjustments are to these images as we go along here. All right. So I guess I can turn that off so we don't have it as, as a distraction. And then I want to match up and I got to choose which way I'm going to go. So I'm just going to start with one way and move to the other direction. So what I need to do is select the layer, this guy here, and then bring up my levels dialog box. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my gamma slider and I'm going to move it in one direction or another to get this to work. Now, what I generally do is you can come in here and just move this slider this way, or you can move the slider. Th Ooh, look at that. Mm. All right. So what you can do is start moving your slider around. And that's what I'm doing here. All right. And then what I do is I generally just put my cursor inside the input field here. And then I just use my up or down arrow keys as I go through this, keeping my eye on this area here and this area here. So I'm just going to hit the negatory on there a couple of times and that seems to have done the job. Hmm, very cool. So there you go, I've got that one done. I'm going to come and click on the next one. I'm going to bring up the visibility of that one and Command L brings up my dialog box, the levels. I can also go under here and choose adjustments levels, Command L. All right, and then I'm just going to click in here and start hitting the down arrow because I know that's the direction I need to go. And I'm going down to 90, getting there, and 85, 84, 83. No, got to wait for the update. Hmm. Something along there. So somewhere between 84, 85, 86, something along those lines. 
All right. All depends on, you know, what you're seeing and all that kind of stuff. So if I'm at 84, 85, 86, looks good. Move on to the next one. Come down here and bring up the levels dialog box. Hold on, let's turn on the visibility, then bring up the levels dialog box. Okay, and you see how much more of a histogram there is in this one than there is in the other ones? Now, if I was dragging these guys from 1.0 down to about 0.85, give or take, all right, to go there, and this one is so much lighter than these guys, you've got to know that I'm going to be dragging this a little bit further down. All right. And okay, so that's gone too far, obviously. <laughs> but somewhere in this area here is going to be uh, good. What I'm looking for is, let's see, it's going too late. That's about right. There you go. That's about right there. Hey, all right. So, you know, if these numbers don't match up with what my PDF handouts have, then, you know, it's just how I was feeling one day versus how I'm feeling and seeing things and maybe the zoom percentage I was at or whatever it is. But we know that this is in the ballpark to get that there. And I can still see there's a little bit of a mismatch in there. But like I said, we can get rid of that really, really easily in the repair and retouch portion of this. Hello. Thank you. Oh, my computer. Sometimes when I have all these external drives connected on, I have to wait for them to power up and zoom through and all that kind of stuff. And this one here is going to have to come down a lot. All right. So I'm just going to, you know, hold this down until we get closer. That looks about right. Good enough for me. So I'm just gonna click OK, and now I have my image set that way. All right, so now the next thing that I would possibly want to do is start uh, uh, fixing uh, the image as far as the brightness and lightness goes from one end to the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the layers panel here and you can see that I have all these individual guys all right what I want to do is I need to I right, make a flattened composite of this just in case I need to go back and adjust these guys later I don't want to flatten this thing down so what I like to do is make a flattened version at the top of the layer stack all right so this is an undocumented keyboard shortcut all right. What I want to do is I want to choose to merge all the visible ones, but I also need to hold down another key. All right. Because if I come down under the layer menu and choose merge visible, uh, because all the eyeballs are turned on, it'll merge them all. All right. And it'll basically flatten the thing. But if I hold down the option key at the same time, so it would be command option shift E, I get a flattened composite at the top of the layer stack. Hmm, there you go. So I'm just going to call this one composite. And what I have my daytime students do is, and possibly even my evening students, and you guys, all right, at some point, is I would create an action that would do that. So all I'd have to do is just, boom, hit the action, and it does that. But the keyboard shortcut is so darn easy, boom. The only thing the action would do is would rename the layer at the same time as composite so I'd know what it is in the stack if I had, you know, 15 or 20 of these guys going through there. All right. So now the next thing I need to do is I need to lighten this portion of the image. All right. So this would be, I guess, uh, the dynamic range aspect of all of this. So what I'm going to do is create an adjustment layer. And this is going to be a curves adjustment layer only because I've been doing levels forever in a day. All right. So I'm not going to do it through that. I'm going to come under here and I'm going to choose new adjustment layer curves. So I end up with this and I'm just going to click away and get there. All right. So here we go. Here is our curves adjustment layer. All right. And, you know, there are some defaults in here like there is for anything. Oh, there's my pinup pop thing. Yeah, you guys will learn about that in a later thing. Maybe. OK, so um, it's just an effect that I do for pinup images to give it a certain pop and all that kind of stuff. All right. Uh, what I need to do is I need to lighten my image. 
All right. So I could, and I don't know how you guys go about doing it. Most people just come in the center and click and then just drag it up and drag it around and get something very interesting. But there's this guy over here and this guy here is called the target adjustment tool, or it has an acronym TAT, T-A-T, target adjustment tool. And what it allows you to do is to come over in any part of the image, click on that and start lightning there. So if I came over and started to click as this point, you can see that little circle on the thing is saying, well, that is there or there or there. The white truck is way up there in the highlights. All right. So I'm going to say, well, what about the sky over here? And it says, well, that's down there in your, uh, the dark ends of your midtones. All right, so if I was to click there and then drag in an upward fashion, all right, I want to brighten the sky to a certain extent. And to what extent? I don't know. I'm going to try that. All right, now I've got that set that way, and the whole image has gone totally too bright, especially over in this area. All right, and you can see there's some dust in here we'll have to fix later and some dust over here we'll have to fix later. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I need this image adjustment to be like it is over here, but not at all over here, and just a slow transition from here to there. So here's the before, and now there's the after, all right? So you can see that it's definitely too much. So what I'm going to do is with this mask as my highlighted thing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over and grab the gradient tool, and how does our gradient work? Well, uh, how does it work? Uh, uh, white reveals and black conceals or something along those lines. So what if I came in here and if I was to start at this end and click and drag and hold the shift key so you end up with a straight line and do this, all right? And if you take a look at my layer mask over here, you can see that I've got black to white. And we know that white reveals and black conceals, so I need the opposite. All right, there's two ways I can do that. One is Command I, you've seen that before. Why don't I just undo this and then click reverse? And then when I drag, drag this across here holding the shift key, then I get the adjustment layer the way I want it to be this way versus that way. All right, so now that I've got that, just remember to turn that guy off so the next time you have it set, it's going the way you want it to go. All right, so now that I've got that going on, there's something else that I would like to possibly do, and that is I could come in and reduce the density of this mask. All right, I can reduce the density of the mask so that it's not necessarily blocking all of it, but I want to reduce the density evenly throughout the whole layer mask. All right, so I could do that. And if I drag it over to here and let go, you can see how I've reduced the density of the layer mask. Obviously that's too strong. So maybe I'm gonna come in at about 80, 85, something along those lines. And that seems to work just fine. Now what I wanna do is I wanna increase my contrast. And the contrast seems to be quite nice over on this side, but a little bit flat on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up another curves adjustment layer. And this one is going to, first I'm gonna rename this one. And this one is going to be LIG Light and Sky. Yeah, right, Light and Sky. And this one is going to be Contrast. There you go. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and see whether or not this uh, medium contrast helps out, or maybe I need to come in and do a stronger contrast. That seems to be too much, so I'm gonna go back to the medium contrast. I'm liking that. I might wanna boost this up just a little bit, just by moving that up a little bit to modify it from what it was, okay? So now I have that, and it's made it too contrasty over here and just right over here. So you know the next thing I'm gonna do is grab the gradient tool, I'm on the mask, and I'm just gonna go from this to this, and that reduces the contrast over there and increases the contrast over here, and there we go. If I were to come over here and click on this guy, and there we go, that's what we came in here with, all right, after we had actually made our adjustments to the tones to get out of the images to 
match up a little bit better. And then this is what it looks like after the adjustments. All right. Again, we can come in and reduce the opacity on these layers if we so choose. We can reduce the density of the masks. We can do all kinds of fun stuff. Now, what we have to do is get rid of some of this dust stuff. I have to go in and find where the overlaps are and fix them up. I have to crop the image and all that fun stuff. I have to do all kinds of interesting things. I need to come over here and just make sure I'm not going to start clicking on anything <laughs> after that. So I'm just going to click on that and walk away from there. All right, so I'm going to crop the image. I'm going to want to get rid of the dust spots. I'm going to want to blend the overlapping areas so that we don't see where they overlap. And then I might have to extend some of the sky and all that kind of stuff. We'll do all of that over in the retouch and repair images lecture.